Boom, Igor, we're going. There we go. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We have a lot of anticipating guests for this podcast because the first podcast we did was apparently very good. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, lots of people texted me that they had fun listening to, so, you know, I'm excited to be back and looking forward to speaking to you. Did you have a lot of people in Russia that listened to the podcast last time we did it? Uh, most people can't understand English back home, so, <laughs> you know, it's... I, I don't really have as many friends over in Russia that I have in Canada anyway. Really? Now, so, yeah. I guess, you, how how many years have you been living in Canada now? I guess. Uh, it's my fifth year now. Fifth so, year? Yeah, basically my prime I spent here, right? 17 to 21. It's, you know, when you make most of your friends in the playing yeah. junior and uh, going over to pros and stuff. So, yeah. I think I think it's just more, um, you know, more friendly people, friendly people here. And uh, back home, I kind of kind of found that I went back and, not as many people were talking to me. So <laughs> Why weren't people talking to you? I don't know. Maybe it's just, um, you know, the way things go. Like, I got to pro and stuff like that. But most uh, most of the guys didn't make it to pro hockey and, you know, yeah. had to quit and go to school and stuff like that. So, you know, it, there was some uh, some guys who, you know, wishing me best and, uh, you know, just wondering how I am. They texting me, calling me and stuff. But some guys, like, who I considered my friends before. But now it's just like, yeah like no text or anything no so, so i mean i mean i knew that i'm gonna face that situation so it's why i have more friends in canada because i think people here are more caring and stuff like that they yeah. care about you so yeah most of my friends are uh, over in canada so when you did you just get back from russia you were there the you just got back you were there well, for yeah. a little bit of the yeah. summer with, yeah. at, at your family's place yeah yeah because well i didn't get to get home last year right because so, of covid yeah i haven't been home over two years so wow. and my i haven't seen my parents in a year and a half so you know, it was important for me to go and spend some time with them because you know i have a brother 16 and he, like haven't seen me in two years and uh so it was it was pretty cool to be back again and uh you know spend as much time with my parents and uh, my brother as i could your family must be very proud of you for what you've accomplished yeah absolutely yeah they just you know they can't believe that well like where i started and you know where I'm at now, and been passed over twice at the draft, and uh, I never quit, and uh, you know have a had a great year in pro, so you know they're really impressed and happy and proud at the same time. So you know, but obviously it's a big credit to them what they've done since I was a kid. Yeah, how do you think you did this year? Obviously, if you look at your stats, you're the leading points on on the team this year. Um, how do you think you did? Uh, I guess right right out of the gate starting the season well it was it was kind of a weird one right because we got to main camp with sense and then um when they made a cut so we went down to hl and uh ontario wasn't proving us to play still us and marley's weren't were only two teams in the league that weren't allowed to play okay so we were practicing basically 12 guys on the ice who were the players in uh ottawa's camp right yeah and other half of guys who were just on the wide one-way deal and with the HL were skating did like in different times so basically for another two three weeks we were just skating as a 12 guys and it's like not a team practice you know we can't do any like five on five drills because we're gonna be gassed so we were kind of just <laughs> developing skills and stuff but then uh basically two to three days before uh, our season started they told us yeah you're good to go guys here's couple team practices and uh here we go i haven't played hockey in 10 months and i gotta go play pro last time i played against what little kids well not little <laughs> kids 16 17 18 right but then now i have to go against guys who have some uh, nhl games and stuff so you know first four games were rough like i thought i'm probably not gonna score a goal in this league like first four games i got like one or two shots on net i was like oh my god like what am i gonna do this year like you know, I'm that kind of guy who loves scoring and creating offense and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a long year. But then uh, after that, like we had 10 or 11 days off again before our next game. And I kind of, you know, took that time with the forward coach, watched lots of videos and stuff and uh, scored my first after. And I just kept on going and uh, I felt that I was keep getting better over the year and um, getting more comfortable and confident. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you make any friends on the team right away? Is there any other Russians in the organization? Yeah, well, it was um, it was five of us. Five Russians? Yeah, it was, well, in Ottawa's organization. It was wow. Zay Zaitsev, Dodonov, Anisimov, Zub, Abramov. And I was sixth, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So we had six guys, and, uh, you know, they were they were really helpful. They kind of, you know, tried to help me around in the uh, main camp. But then after that, like, 
we couldn't see each other because of uh, COVID and NHL, AHL bubble. So, yeah. but me and Abramov were in the AHL and actually we were living together. So, you know, it was kind of kind of fun uh, being around a Russian and speak Russian. Yeah, but those guys like Anisimov and uh, Zaitsev, of the guy, older guys, like they were, you know, texting me, checking on me, how I'm doing and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. It's just pretty awesome experience for a young kid like me being around uh, those guys, right? Like Anisimov has uh, over ten year, pr- ten years in NHL, and yeah. you know, same as Dodonov and Paul Zaitsev have been steady. And I, obviously, Zub just came over, but he had a uh, had a pretty good year in NHL and then just signed a uh, two year extension with Ottawa. So you know, it's pretty awesome that he's coming back. You've been very fortunate with going to organizations like in, in Cape Breton and just having a good support system. I feel like with Cape Breton, you talk about Drake and how comfortable you were just going in there, having a friend, and now you go to Ottawa and you have a good support system around you, and I feel like it all translates into you becoming better and better each year when it comes to playing hockey. Is that am I, is that right when I say that? Yeah, exactly. Well, when I had uh, in the AHL, we had, I had Logan Shaw as well. And, oh, yeah, Shaw, know, yeah. Yeah, we were skating together and stuff like that, so he was, he was kind of guy just – you know, took me under his armpit and just, like, carried me around and talked to me every day and kind of told me to not be worried about, like, not scoring and stuff. It's going to come and, uh, you know, just tried to make me feel as comfortable as he could and, uh, you know, it helped a lot. So he was just a big piece of that too. He must be a great leader for that organization. He has so much pro experience going into there from Winnipeg, coming to Ottawa. Everyone must look up to him. And also he's a Cape Bretoner, so he has a good personality, you know? Yeah, absolutely. He was, you know, he was a great leader in the dressing room. You know, always talked. And, uh, you know, he was like basically a babysitter for us because we had so many (laughs) young guys. And uh, he had to do that job basically, you know, taking care of uh, all of it. And, uh, you know, he did great. And, uh, you know, just I love that. He was he was there and he signed a contract with Ottawa before you know me coming over, so you know I'm looking forward because he had he got at least one more year with them, so we're gonna come back and well obviously hopefully, you know we both make it to Ottawa, but if not we'll go down and uh, have another fun year. How did you find the the speed of pro hockey for your first year? I know you said the first four games you found it tough. You didn't know if you were going to score or not, but I'm assuming after those first couple of games you felt a little bit comfortable. But overall, how did you find the speed, and did you think you were able to keep up with it pretty quickly? Yeah, well, you know, first first what I thought it was like it's not even about the leg speed. It's how quick you got to make your decision because you have like – I don't know, in, in junior you would have like three seconds to shoot, but in pro you're going to have a second and a half or a second, right? So yeah. how quick you got to make that decision. So I thought that was a, that was the biggest key. But the, by the time comes, like you just, you know, you were able to keep up with the pace. So, but you did, like the most important thing was, uh, you know, to make the quick decisions because you didn't have as much time as you think. So, you know, I, first four games I was just overthinking the game and try try to do all the right things, like, you know, play perfect system and stuff like that. But I think... I'm not that kind of player who's going to do everything like A+, plus, perfect defensive coverage and stuff like that. You know, that even what coaches told me, like, you know, you're um, one of our scoring forces in the team. So, like, you know, don't overthink the game. It's going to come and you're just learning and stuff like that. But, you know, try to just play hockey because it's you do what you love. You don't have to, you know, make things complicated. So that was the biggest thing for me, I think. Yeah. Did you find the defensive side of the game? Did you find that you had more responsibility with making sure that you translated it to the offensive game? Because we every time we talk to a pro, they always talk about the defensive side of the game and how responsible you have to be. I don't know. Did you figure that out? I guess early in the stages of your pro career. Yeah, absolutely. If you you don't if you don't play defensive game right, you know the guys there are so skilled that you know if you you know lose your guy for a second, he's gonna score. Yeah. So. If you want to play offense, you got to play defense. So yeah. it's all starts from defensive zone. As, as quick as you're going to get out of the zone, you know, more more time in offensive zone you're going to spend. So, you know, I watched lots of videos with the coaching and, and uh, you know, just the, the year went on. I got better and I got more confident in defensive zone. And uh, I even got put on situations when the other team was pulling a goalie and I scored an empty net. I wasn't, I wasn't able to do that in uh, in junior. Like the coach wasn't trusting. Well, he, never, he just asked me if you want to go. So I'm like, ah, you know what? You have players who are gonna do that. And I'm, I'm not confident in myself. So, <laughs> but yeah, we, I even scored an empty netter. Like I was like, uh, and the coach looks at me and uh, he, I was like, you know, last time I played uh, six on five other way yeah. when the other team played, it probably was like ten or eleven. <laughs> he just looked at me, started laughing and stuff. So I think uh, as the year went on, uh, you know, I got comfortable defensive zone and uh, coaches start trusting me more. That's awesome. 
That's great to hear. And it must be nice going into the next season. You know, you, you led the team in points. You're still a young guy. You must have this confidence rolling through the summer. And you must be, I don't know, I th- I must, I'm must. i assuming you want summer to be over and you want to be back playing because you you had so much confidence and so much going for yourself when the season ended, no? Yeah, for sure. But I think it was, you know, we played 35 games and it's kind of a, you know, huge bonus for all of our young guys because we had, well, we we were playing at some point. I had line with the guys who is 2,099 and 2,000. So we were playing all three guys of those rookies and wow. we we're like 21 and under. So I think we had so many young guys who got those 35 games under belt and the next year should be normal. We should have a playoff run, right? Like playoffs should happen. We're going to play some U.S. teams and stuff. So I think those 35 games kind of, you know, helped us to get more comfortable and get more confident in that league. And so next year, we don't have to start from zero like we did this year. We yeah. kind of know what to expect. And, uh, you know, we're going to have three months of summer summer training. So we're going to be stronger and more confident, obviously. And yeah. so, you know, I'm already looking forward. I'm just itching to get back, get yeah. back to work. You look. You, did you lose weight? Well, I'm. Uh, you look. You look like. Yeah, I got. I got in pretty good shape now. Yeah, like, well, a, you were in good shape last year, yeah. but you just seem like thinner, like more muscular, like. Something. Yeah. Well, I'm. Uh, I'm two ten now. So. What were you last year? Well, last year before I l- left to Ottawa, I was like two seventeen ish. Yeah. But well, when my junior year finished, I was like two thirty five ish. So. Two thirty five. That's twenty five pounds down since you know wow. last March. What what did you change? Diet or just you know the way, the way I'm eating and you know, I'm eating with purpose. Everything I, I put in my mouth basically is a purpose that is gonna do something right to my body. So you know I kind of switched that and uh, just uh, you know hundred percent work ethic at the gym. Like try to make most of it every hour, like hour hour and a half we have at the gym. I try to make most of it. So kind of well I went back home to Russia as well and uh, you know everybody would expect like me just. You know, relax there and say, like, I'm not going to train. But, you know, I took, like, eight to nine days off, and I just went back at it. And for over a month, month and a half I was there, I was just grinding. And I came here, and everybody just like, what did you do to yourself? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I did to myself, but I kind of, you know, just everybody is saying, like, you look great and, uh, you know, this great shape. And, like I said before, like, I'm not used to carrying around the six-pack. I'm used to around, carrying around a one-pack, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Did you get on the ice at all when you were up in Russia, or you just did off ice? No, I did. I did get on the ice like nine to ten times. I was on wow. the ice with my brother. Okay, actually, because he's a goalie. Yeah, yeah, you were telling me. So uh, I was just renting the ice first couple of weeks. Him, him, and I and Otto, well, Belleville coaches were sending me some uh, some drills to do the things they want me to work on, right? So, but then uh, I saw a couple of guys skating on, on the ice from KHL, who plays KHL, and I knew them from I, you know, back. Yeah, when I was Datsuk? young, was that no, there? Oh. No, 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 I wish. <laughs> I think he wasn't even skating yet, like this summer, because he's trying to make a decision if he's gonna keep playing or retire. Oh, okay, right? okay. So, and it was a couple of young guys. They're like twenty three, twenty four, but they already have like three to four years KHL. So, they, I kind of came up to them. I was like, you know, we should just rent the ice together and skate together. We, you know, it's gonna be cheaper for all of us to yeah. and split the split the ice. So, yeah, and then uh, you know, six to seven sessions I had with them out there and. Uh, get back here now and you know skating in Halifax and Cape Breton so that's what oh did you skate in Cape Breton yeah I did skate in Cape Breton a couple of times too it was Chris Colligan or yeah he was a coach in uh Eagles my last year so yeah, yeah he's yeah. always welcome and he always tells me you know anything you need so I kind of my first week after quarantine I came out in Cape Breton I had to do so many things get my vaccine shot and uh, I got a new car you got a new car <laughs> yeah I bought it off my billet family actually they kind of just okay nice sold me sold me <laughs> to it and uh, yeah so i'm happy with that and you know had to do all that insurance stuff and yeah so <laughs> yeah you obviously you have your license here yeah exactly yeah, yeah, so yeah, i had to do it. all those things so i spent that week in cape breton i worked out there and uh, skated like three times with chris nice yeah. when you go to ottawa do you just drive up or do you fly yeah i'm you gonna drive, drive up this year so i'm gonna yeah. have a car for a year that's nice yeah that's uh, like last year i couldn't couldn't get it over so it was kind of, I was on uh, my uh, teammate, yeah. basically, drove back. He was Shaw just, drove you around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was just driving me around. Um, how were your exit meetings this year? What did they say they wanted you to work on? You said they sent you drills. Like, what, what, what are some of the things they want you to work on? Well, it was, 
always before it was like everybody was telling me you know keep losing weight and uh get in better shape and uh you know straight line skating and stuff like that but after this season they kind of told me you know straight straight line speed is not an issue anymore so there you go kinda, so, and they said don't you don't have to worry about losing weight anymore and uh, just quit on that basically you know eat healthy and you know keep your body healthy obviously but they just told me you know those little um you know things like change direction as quick as i can like because i'm a big guy big body so you know out, coming out of the corner where you know i can make some room for myself where i'm gonna do like you know extra step crossover and you know me i'm not i'm gonna have like extra second so that was that was kind of those things like i have to work on just change the direction it's coming coming quicker out of my turn so that's that's been the most are you out with jill yeah i'm out with jill did you tell her this stuff already oh yeah she yeah. knows yeah she knows it so it's like is she in communication with ottawa like are they talking to her on what to work with you or do you just tell her and then she works on it? Like, uh, how does that relationship uh, work? basically they told me to talk to her like okay. i think they have no problems me just talking to her because yeah. you know i'm a it's basically up to you you're a pro right like you got to come back better i never right? thought of yeah, it's yeah true. You're, you're a pro, pro. Yeah. if yeah. they can tell you to you know they can not even tell you a thing and it's up to you you're gonna work out or not right yeah yeah like it's it's basically in your contract that you're gonna have to come back in a good shape and you know be prepared for a camp so that's that's pretty much it like i've just been talking to jill and stuff what i have to work on um compared to last year this year you must be way more confident for training camp knowing that you've been through everything with the pro year and just knowing what to expect and knowing what to i guess anticipate for training camp you must be like i said i think two questions ago you must be more excited for training camp this year knowing you know what to expect yeah for sure and just it's you know it's a fun experience for young guys like me like going in and uh, see all those big guys skating around and you kind of on the ice with them trying to keep up with them so now last year you know kind of was a weird one because we didn't have any exhibition games or anything to kind of taste that mostly yeah, right yeah because we only had uh we only played scrimmages so this year is going to be exhibition games where i can kind of show what i can do right so you know coming into camp i'm just going to come in uh, with the right mindset like i'm not going to try to change anything in igor sokla i'm just going to come in and do things i do right mm. so kind of you know feeling more confident obviously and uh, obviously like you said more excited How, what was the travel like this year playing against teams in the ahl did you obviously you just stayed within canada how many other teams did you play uh we played four other teams we played uh stockton because they moved to calgary calgary and we played manitoba and we played laval as a montreal and uh Mar Toronto and marley's yeah did, were you guys in ottawa or were you guys yeah in... we were in ottawa oh you played what, yeah. what's the rink called canadian tire center mm -hmm. you played out of the canadian tire yeah, center we played in ottawa's rink and well we practiced in their practice ring but we played our all our games in uh big ring that's that's all that's yeah, that's, that wicked. Was, that, that's that was, wicked yeah that was awesome experience obviously you know tough that it's no fans and stuff but yeah. you know but still pretty cool be be around nhl ring for you know, like i said before for young guys like us it's just awesome experience so i think centers did a great job with us you know sending us up and uh just you know let us have a good year basically out of weird one did you guys fly to games or you must have flown yeah we flew to out west to manitoba and calgary but yeah. we drove to well love Montre montreal is two hours toronto is three and a half four so it's yeah. not too bad so that's not bad yeah what was the living situation like where did you live in the hotel yeah you we were living in hotels but you were only allowed to be by yourself in the room <sighs> yeah was that that must have been tough mm. i actually didn't mind it honestly. you didn't mind it yeah by yourself in the room you kind of chill you know do <laughs> do your things kind of you know not worry about to you know, not letting your roommate, like, do his things. Like, maybe he wants to nap and you don't, and you kind of turn on the YouTube or or uh, Netflix, right? And it's yeah. kind of full blasting, full volume, and you kind of yeah. worried about him, like, taking a nap. So, but by yourself, you kind of just do your things. Yeah. Were you allowed to leave the room during the day? or did you Yeah, we were, we had our, like, lawn, lounges. Lounge? Yeah, yeah, we could hang out there, basically, kind of try to spread out six feet apart but we could play like table tennis just have a chats and stuff like that so that was i was like kind of things we were doing oh, yeah. you know have a conversation at the dinner or lunch and stuff like that but most of the times you were you were supposed to be in your room i guess it's a really good atmosphere to focus on hockey you know it's like there, there really isn't much distraction no you no know? no you basically you know you just come in you go you know and on a game day in the morning you're gonna go more morning skate and all kind of videos and stuff like that then you know obviously you had your meals and stuff but then you go in your room you relax chill and then you know get dressed 
go to the game and you know you all said and ready like there's no no excuse for you to not be ready for a game like yeah. you had all that time to prepare yourself in the morning you know doing stretches and warm up and stuff and having a morning skate if you need to so that was kind of you know the thing like i said like you had no excuses to not be ready for the game yeah it must be yeah did you did you find with no fans did, did you miss the fans yeah absolutely yeah it's, it's i think it's one of the biggest parts of hockey like it's it makes it fun so I mean, it was it was weird to see those plastic heads, you know, just standing in those stands. So, yeah, but yeah, kind of made most of it. You know, I was, you know, I was happy to play hockey, right? Like yeah. I didn't play it for ten months, and I was just, you know, that young kid who is just shaking to get out there and play hockey games. So I was kind of, you know, I I will go through anything to play thirty five, forty games this year. Yeah, how how many games are usually is there in the AHL? NHL it's eighty two, right? It's eighty two yeah, NHL. Yeah, it's seventy six in AHL. Seventy six. So, yeah, we only played thirty five. It's not even half a season. Have they released the schedule for next year for the AHL? I know they did for the NHL. Yeah, we have seventy two games last next year, and we have we play in all the U.S. You teams. travel everywhere. Yeah, we play. Well, we play in kind of how they usually do it. Like you play your division kind of. Yeah. And you have a couple games against other teams, but we have seven or eight teams in our division now and some of those teams are from u.s like uh, cleveland i believe and a couple others got rochester so yeah it should be fun a year that see that's the, there's a whole nother element that you're man you're gonna have to go pee again you, you keep no, we're good, drink, we're good. you're we're sure good. <laughs> you're drinking like i gotta keep it hydrated <laughs> what are you doing after this we work oh, i gotta go on the ice you're going on the ice with yeah. jill yeah so <laughs> okay um it, it, that's a whole other element of professional hockey that you must be excited for is going to see the rest of the world. You yeah. know, you, you get to go to places. Have you ever been to Cleveland? No. You know what I mean? Like, that's no. what I mean. It must be exciting for you to be able to go see the rest of North America. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm just looking forward to have, a, you know, playoffs and stuff like that. Try to have a run. To yeah. Come because it's been two years I haven't played playoffs. Like, my last year in junior got caught out, and this year was no playoffs. So, yeah. it's basically going to be three years yeah. Trying to what did pull. what what did you think of the playoffs this year on TV? Did you did you like did you find the pace high? Oh, it was it was yeah, it was a crazy yeah. pace there. Like first round was kind of kind of a more uh, who scores more. It's like if, if you watch Tampa and Florida, they were like eight five scores and stuff like that. But then towards the like semifinals, you could see just it's like yeah. so hits and it's shots from everywhere and you know, you know have, have no room and you know, it's basically who's tougher is gonna win. Yeah. So you know, Tampa kind of showed that that they're they're good again. I guess yeah. two, you, two, years, in, two oh, yeah. years in a row. Did you have any friends playing? I know Romanov. He's Russian, isn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. Do we you know at, him? Yeah, we played at the World Juniors together. Right? Oh, you guys were on the same yeah. team. Yeah. So I know him. I you know I texted him and obviously we talked and nice. We couldn't see each other this year because I was AHL and he was NHL and kind of <laughs> we were living at the same hotel, but we weren't well be- because we were stuck in a hotel for a month. Yeah. After we got, because we they weren't len- proving us to play hockey, so we had to stay in a hotel. They couldn't give us housing letters to just go, yeah, you're going to get a house, but you might not play, right? So, yeah. But those NHL teams were staying in the same hotel, and I knew he was there, and I kind of texted him. I was like, yeah, like, we can't even see each other. Like, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of was rough. It's such a weird year for people like you who are just transitioning into the pro atmosphere because I feel like from the stories you're telling me, you haven't really gotten to experience the real pro yeah. life yet. Like you, you just got a taste of it, yeah. and this year hopefully you'll be able to experience the whole thing. Yeah. That's what I'm. Fe- that's what I feel like at least. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it looks like you know everything going positive way now. So yeah, yeah. So when do you head to camp? They haven't confirmed anything. But it should be like September, mid September, I believe. Okay, nice. Yeah. It, so it's another month ish of work and, you know, go get back there and uh, kind of start all the things, all the f- exciting things. Are you going to try to enjoy summer at all or are you just working all summer and then uh, straight to camp? Are oh, you... I'm working. <laughs> I, I kind of, you know, try to, you know, get as, get as, gu- as good as I could and uh, try to get better as much as I can and, uh, you know, just go into the camp. Is, right mindset and a better player who do you think is the number one person right now that's giving you a little bit of guidance that's helping you with a, a positive mindset going into next year uh i mean i think it's just everybody around me all the people i know yeah. like you know my billets my family back home talking to me every day and my billets here in halifax and you know my agent and jill and pat like so like all all the people around me basically like even the guys in the gym like sand and Mikey, 
Like, oh yeah, you were yeah, solid. Yeah, we were we were putting a quality work in there, and you know we were working hard every day, and it's kind of it's kind of fun that we were pushing each other, right? It's you know especially from last summer that we had to work out for what eight nine months. Oh, that's so long. And you know we come in at, at at the gym every day and push each other and stuff. It's fun. So you know having them around me is is pretty like it's pretty awesome too because you know we all always try to push each other at the gym and kind of you know get better together as a group and. Uh, Especially and on the east as well. So you know the boys are putting quality work, and like I said, Sanzi is like, so the boys putting quality work and score hat tricks in the AHL. So yeah, uh, exactly. So you know we all try to get better. You guys have a great group that you work out with. I grew up with Brennan. So I grew up with him, so I've known him my whole life, and I I know the work that he put in to be able to get to the position he's in. And I know Drake had to work to where he's at. And everyone that you that you work out with at that gym has a really good story, almost like a, a really good underdog story. And yeah. I like that all of you guys are together pushing towards a common goal. It's it's a cool thing to see on whenever Pat posts on Instagram and just look at you guys all together. It's it's cool to see. Yeah, exactly. Well, Brent Sanji, like I know. I never knew him right before I came my for my first summer and kind of since then we kind of got super close to each other and like we always talk over phone when we like he was in uh, in his team this year and Lehigh we kind of you know yeah. like call on Snapchat just you should check how I am and how he is and stuff like that so I think I got a pretty good, pretty good relation with him and you know he's always pushing me at the gym and I do too as well <laughs> pushing him so that's fun. You guys will be able to play against each other yeah, this year. Yeah, we we're well, playing. Well, if, if you might crack Ottawa's roster, I'm not saying you won't, but you know you might be able no, to play oh, against them. No, for sure, him, yeah. December 15th. I already sent him. Uh, oh, did you? Yeah, I already <laughs> sent him the schedule. I said December 15th. You're coming to Belleville, and uh, you know, I might drop you. But I, was, I was just saying it for fun. Obviously, no way I'm gonna go against him. He's a psycho. <laughs> Does he hit the bo- Does he hit the boxing bag at the gym? Is there oh, a boxing bag there? No, it's it's not there anymore. It was in Pro Edge when yeah. other place we used to be, but now it's not anymore. But you all, you all like you know, you could see him just shadow fight all the, every time he's just trying to do something and all <laughs> that. And I was like, oh my god, there's no way I can go against that guy. I'm just you know, I'm just gonna try score goals. And <laughs> he said he's gonna try to drop me, and I was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> You're a big man. Yeah, you're but, like he. What is he like? One seventy five. Yeah, but he's he's tough. He's the one tough. Yeah, he's guy. tough as nails. Yeah, exactly. He oh. doesn't feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was wondering about your. Uh, I remember last year I was talking to you about your stick, and right before you started this podcast, you're like in junior, you have um you have three seconds to get a shot off, and you're like at the pro, you maybe have like one and a half seconds to get a shot off. I was wondering if you made any adjustment to your stick, maybe the flex, the curve, to be able to get a shot off a little bit quicker. No, haven't changed anything. Haven't changed anything. Yeah, haven't changed a thing on my stick. Actually, I love them. I think, I think I'm, you know, if you like something, you're just gonna stick to it for you know as much as you can, and I kind of got stuck to that one and I don't want to change anything like I got a perfect flex and perfect curve and everything it's kind of you know it's about your hands not not the stick right if the stick feels right in your hands you can do lots of things so it's you know it's feeling great and you know I'm not planning on changing anything what flex do you use again 85 man that's that's so flexy yeah it is that's like, flexy yeah I'm not a I'm not a big one-timer guy so I'm mostly a wrist chart so yeah, exactly. It gives me enough, you know, power and uh, flex to, you know, fly out like a bullet. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I'm sticking to those for sure. When you get to the pro level, do they give you maybe like a book with more options of more grips, more curves, more, I guess, options for your stick? Do they give that to well, you? Well, yeah, this year it kind of was a weird one because the guys couldn't come. Oh, like, like the CCM, CCM bar yeah. guys couldn't come, right? Because it was just bubbles, like, yeah. so it was a weird one. kind And I just, you know, when... They asked me what sticks you want. I kind of said I'm sticking to the same one. So just, you know, CCM obviously has it in their system that I'm using those sticks. So they just kind of ordered those ones. But I think next year it's probably going to be a bit different then. So we will see. But I'm not planning to change anything. So Do you have to use a certain stick in the AHL or can you pick like Bauer? No, no CCM. You have to use CCM. I think one or two guys are allowed to use Bauer. On it. Really? Yeah. I wonder why that is. Yeah, but I, I'm... I'm sticking to the CCM because I even changed the skates to CCM. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm but you happy. got CCM on the hat too. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's. It's the back. team sponsor. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I changed the 
to CCM skates as well. CCM, if you're listening, chuck Igor some money and sponsor him because he loves your product. And he'll be a 50 goal scorer in the NHL one day using your sticks. But I remember like watching. I remember watching some of your highlight tapes when you were back in Cape Breton, and you got you were able to get those shots off so quick, and that always amazed me. And I remember when you came over the first time on our podcast i went out to the car after and i was like let me see your i gotta see this stick because it's just it, it is incredible how quick and how low you're able to get those shots off and i don't know if you can translate that to the nhl or the pro level that can't help that that has to help yeah 100%. i mean yeah you know most of my goals came you know from clear shots this year too like i would say what i scored 15 and maybe 12 or 13 where where i clearly beat the goalie so and other two or three i was like one of them was empty netter and uh other one was just a, like a rebound. Other two were rebounds. Yeah. So most of my goals came like from clear shots, ba- basically being a goalie. And I love how you said that you translated your goal scoring. It all happens from skating. Yeah. That was – explain that again. Uh, Well, I mean, you know, for me, I'm a goal scorer. Like to be able to get open, you know, for that extra second, you got you to gotta have some power in your legs, right? Like – People are smart there, and you know they can follow you around easily. So you gotta have have that, you know, little power and agility in you to just you know get that extra second to open and you know get that shot off. So I think me being you know working on my skating for the past what three summers now, like helping me a lot to just you know being able to get those scoring scoring positions where I can release my shot. So and obviously you know beating guys one on one wide is because I'm a big body, right? I can you know, try to get to the net, like, and stuff like that, yeah. You lead, do you lean yeah, on guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, you know, and obviously to get in that position first, you got to beat him kind of, you know, make yourself a little bit of room to try to put your elbow down and, you know, put your body on him so yeah. you kind of have to be ahead of him, right? Yeah. So guys are so strong there, you're not going to be able to just, like, push him off and just get in front of him. You kind of going to have to, you know, you know, beat him wide a little bit and then, you know, push on his hands where he doesn't have as much strength. So, you know, that, those things, and obviously, like I said, the, like the changing directions and all that kind of stuff, as the year went on, I kind of felt like watching the videos that I was able to make myself more room in the corners where I kind of spin off guys and stuff like that. So, you know, it was, it was just great because, you know, when I'm younger, when I'm playing junior, you're not going to have a strength coach coming up to you and telling you, yeah, buddy, like, you need to do that for warm-up. You need to do that for before your game. Like... It's going to be one guy who's doing his job. He's going to just, you know, give you the warm-up for all your team, yeah. nothing specific. Yeah. But then where I came there in pro and Jeremy, our strength coach, Beno, Jeremy Beno, I was just, you know, first thing we talked about, it was like, I know that I have not a good mobility in my hips, my ankles. So it all starts from that. All the quick turns and stuff, it starts from ankle mobility. It's how, you know, mm-hmm. how good is your ankles okay. to change and, and uh, you know, edges and stuff. So, And then he just kind of came up with the warm-up for me. Here we go. That's your warm-up. You're going to warm up your hi- hips. You're going to warm up your ankles. And then you're going to, you know, f- to create as much power as I can, I'm going to do some squats and box jumps and stuff like that so my legs are ready. Before so, You do this before the game? Yeah, before yeah, the game. Yeah. And then you're just like, holy, like I feel like, on another level before you know game comes but whereas junior you just do that warm-up and you just like you don't know how you know it's just like yeah i'm warmed up and stuff like that but it's you don't you don't get to that 100 percent yeah that you can with specific stuff so wow that's a really good insight yeah what ankle warm-up do you do well it's a bunch of like you know squats where you're like i don't know heel your heels elevated your toes elevated so you kind of you know, doing a squat and your, like, knees go over your ankles. So okay. Kind of all that kind of stuff. Stretching and, you know, so. Do you use the bands? Like, the? do you use those the bands a lot to yeah. stretch? Yeah, for uh, my hamstrings and stuff. That your kind of hamstrings? Stuff. Yeah. How do you warm up a hip, your hips? Hips is just mostly it's stretching and mobility stuff, like 90-90. I don't know if you ever heard of that. No. Can, oh, I'm, I'm not going to show you that right now. Just show me. Can you show me? Oh. What do you do? Well, you kind of sit on the ground and you, oh, okay. your legs are bent and you kind of. 90 90 degree both legs and you kind of you know 90 90 yeah like 90 degrees yeah so you kind of go from one side to other side one side to other okay okay so okay yeah 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 you're yeah. kind of not touching the ground with anything it's kind of just your hips working so that's kind of what oh, we're okay okay yeah, so like all those things i mean and they're pros and they you know it's been a lot of guys who are playing 10 15 years in nhl their hips that's rough on their bodies right like yeah. playing 70 75 games a year yeah and 
that kind of stuff. So they know what they're doing. So. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've golfed with a couple guys who's like pro hockey guys this year. And like, we'll be on like the 15th hole and they'll just get down and just start stretching their hip. Like we'll just be like getting ready to tee off. And before he tees off, he'll just like sit there and stretch his hips because they're, they're, they're sore. Yeah. Like you, you feel it. You feel it. And so right now I'm kind of young and I can't, you know, I wanted to take care of that. So I don't have those issues Yeah. later on. Right. So now I'm always, you know, before, before my workout, I do proper war- warm up. And then after my warm workout, I do stretching and then I go home. I kind of roll out and do another stretching and do yoga twice a week. So you do yoga twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hot yoga, regular yoga. Just regular yoga. I just I got well, my coach from strength coach from Belleville sent me a video to follow for like 30, 35 minutes, and he said just do it, you know, twice a week. Belleville sent this to you. Yeah. Man, I gotta play for Belleville. That's awesome. No, he's a really awesome guy. He just you know. He always checking on me how I'm doing, how I'm feeling, and stuff like that. And even during the year, he always kind of comes up to me and just like, "How you feeling?" He wants to always know how you're feeling, right? Like, yeah. what what he's gonna give me to do for my workout today? Is it gonna be heavy or is it gonna be e- take it easy? Do mobility mm. and kind of that kind of stuff, right? So he always checking on you how you feel, and so like, you know, and it just helps. Like, you just today you come in and you be honest with with yourself, like. I'm tired. Like we just played three and three or three and four. Right. And yeah. you just like, we had one day off and you kind of still feel like it wasn't enough. And you just like, yeah, like I'm pretty tired. It's, you know, my body's sore. So he's, he's going to take easy. It's going to be like some movement stuff. Like, you know, it's always things to do to get better and get more comfortable. Right. So, yeah. I mean, but you know, when you come in and you're just like fully rested and you're just like, okay, here we go. We're going to lift heavy today. Right. So, yeah. How do you trick yourself? And like, I don't really like working out. I I just don't like lifting weights. I don't like running. How do you like all good? Yeah. How do you like wake up every morning and go like okay? Like how, you must have to trick yourself because yeah, you have to admit it's not fun to lift weights. Like, but how how do you do it every day? How do you? I think it's fun for me now. You think it's fun? I yeah. think I think it's something I can't be without it. Even on my days off, I kind of shaking to do something right. Really, like, to do some kind of type of cardio, like jump rope and stuff like that. So. I'm shaking to do some stuff. I feel like I'm missing something during the day when I do do anything, and and especially working out with, like I said before, Mikey and Brandon and Drake, all those guys. Like, yeah, it kind of helps. They all we all come in with the right mindset, and we kind of push each other and stuff like that. So it gets easier over time, and kind of after that, you just you know feel it. You need it. Like I, you know, summer summer is short. Like we're already in August. Yeah, it's been two months, and you got one month month left. And right now, it's kind of where you're gonna make that last push. Yeah. So for me right now, it's uh, extra motivation before camp to get in the best shape as I can and get better as much as I can. What are you trying to work on now, muscle or cardio? Or w- what are you like working well, on this last month? Well, we kind of do all all kind of things, right? You can't just focus on one thing and lose all your strength, right? Like I, you know, I can lift pretty heavy on my lower body. And, you know, Pat always tells me like you can't not do it. And like it, you're going to lose that all that strength. You're going to take month off, right? So we kind of, you know, doing those you know, you pair up the strength and then you pair, pair up with the power, like jump squats with the dumbbells or, you know, those kind of things. And, uh, you know, mostly, like I said, I'm working on changing directions and stuff. Like that. So in the gym, it's like those quick sprints, you know, agility work, agility and reaction work. So, I mean, those like the most important things. And obviously upper body, you can't, you know, miss on that as well. Like it's, it's really important. So today we had another, you know, pretty good upper body day. Good chest day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I felt a little pump going. So, yeah, so yeah, we've been working basically on everything what you need for a hockey player. That's awesome. Yeah, it must be exciting. Like, yeah, just to be able to translate all that hard work over to training camp. I, I would now that you mention all this, I would love to be able to go watch an NHL training camp. That would be a really cool thing to observe because oh, yeah. everybody's in the best shape. Everybody wants. There's some guys that aren't gonna make the team for sure but they want to make the team yeah it, it it seems like a very interesting not atmosphere but it just seems like a very interesting uh community not community what's the word i'm looking for mark like uh yeah it seems like an interesting group to observe on the ice yeah just exactly. watching everyone. well you have many kids who coming in and trying to steal a job right yeah so they're all motivated right yeah so well you look at us and other guy, older guys who already played maybe you know 14, 13 years pro, and they're kind of feeling comfortable already. Maybe they yeah. not didn't work as hard over summer. And here, are lots of guys who 
are putting in the work and kind of, you know, just getting itchy to get out there and try to steal a job. So I think I'm kind of one of those guys who wants to put extra work in, you know, yeah. work on extra things and talk to the coach and stuff and see what they think and kind of send them a video of me doing on ice, off ice, and just see what they think, right? Yeah. Always, always be in touch with them, player development coach. So, like, it's always just, you know, for me being a pro is fun and uh, – I love do, able to do that stuff, like get clips from development coach, like of other players he thinks, you know, I'm comparable to yeah. how they play, how they do it in NHL, right? Yeah. So I think that's just, you know, it's it's fun. That's fun being pro. If like before, if you know, like you're going to make the NHL team or go back to the AHL, how do you figure that out? Will, will your agent call you first or will the coach on the team tell you first? And is there politics at all within training camp at all? Like, is there... It, like it, I remember when I used to play hockey, I would always watch like the trainer because the trainer would always tell you, "Hey, Igor, or hey, Justin, come see the coach," because I was probably going to get cut and go back down. Like, is, is there things like that within the dressing room or within training camp that you have to observe? I think it's just, I mean, everybody's coming in in the same spot yeah. and try to get a job in NHL, right? Nobody, nobody's kind of looking at you as like, yeah, he just got drafted and stuff like that. But if you're better than someone, you're gonna get the job. But you know, they make the they make the cards. They just, you know, ask you to come in and talk to you and tell you how your camp went and what they think. And, you know, you and they're just telling you, yeah, yeah. like you're going down to AHL, it's no problems. Like, it's not a know, big deal. Yeah, it's you like, see yeah. how many players from Tampa played in AHL yeah. this year. And this was like 90 some percent players went through AHL to get to NHL. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's key for development in, uh, you know, NHL players. So, I think it's no big deal at all. And so, yeah, but you just coming in. Everybody, I think, comes in in the same spot. Like everybody's trying to get that job in the NHL. But then, after you get sent down, like you should be extra motivated to you know prove yourself, prove everybody, and kind of you know get more confident in AHL and kind of try to perform there well. And you know people are watching you, like general manager watching you, head coach of NHL watching you, assistant general manager watching you. Everybody's watching you. Mm-hmm. Everybody's watching how you do. And if you kind of get sent down to AHL and you feel like you were supposed to stay in NHL it's kind of like yeah that guy is not working hard enough like you know so like it's kind of all those things they look at everything you do how you know how much time you spend at the gym how quick you get like you know all that kind of stuff if you're stretching after games if you're not stretching they, like, they're watching that well they're not they're not kind of just gonna go and like see if you did that or not but if they don't see you they kind of they know like yeah, yeah oh here we go he took that out he didn't want to stretch today so yeah. All that kind of stuff. You got to have right attitude to play pro. Like, you just have to have a right attitude, right? So, like, you have to be motivated every day and, uh, you know, and, well, I mean, people making big money there, right? It's your job. So, I think it's just, for me, it's kind of, I'm that guy who is motivated to do all the things. And I think it's it's fun. Like, pl- even playing this year in pro, I just, you know, it was awesome to be around older guys. Like, there was Cody Golubev who played over. You know, 200 games in NHL, I believe. Like, he was talking to me a lot, and you kind of feel like, yeah, like, that guy had a taste of NHL, and you're just speaking to him right now. It's kind of, and you see what he does at the gym. Like, he warms up for, like, 20, 25 minutes properly, weights, and all that kind of stuff. And then he goes, you know, after a game, he's stretching, doing a cold tub, hot tub, massage, and all that kind of stuff. So you see at the guy who is 30 years old, and he does all that stuff. And then I'm here 21 years old, my first year pro, not going to go stretch. Yeah. Or not going to work out or not going to do proper warm up or not going to do proper recovery or not going to eat well. And you just like question yourself, like if he can do that and he played games in the NHL and, you know, he's pro for 10, 11 years. So obviously you as a kid can't do it. Yeah. Well, that's very well said. That was yeah. a very good answer. Yeah. It's good that you're taking recognition or taking notice, excuse me, of that now. Yeah. That's good that you notice that now. So. Later in your career, maybe you'll be able to help out a 21-year-old with exactly. the exact same thing. Exactly. That's very cool. How much time are we at, Mark? 43 minutes. We're at 43 minutes right now? Holy smokes. Uh, I'm good. For you it. sure? Oh, yeah. You don't have to uh, use the washroom? Dude, you've been drinking water left, right, no, and center. No, I'm good. I'm good. One sec. I'm, what time is it? 12.22? I'm, I'm on the ice at 2, so I'm chilling. What time is it? Uh, tw- oh, 12. Tw- yeah. I'm okay, a, you're I'm, good? I'm on the ice at 2, so how far is Civic from here, you know? S- how long far Civic from here? Uh, maybe 10 minutes. 10, yeah, 10 so minutes? Uh, I need like 20 minutes to get dressed. Not even, actually. <laughs> okay, you're good to go. Yeah, we're coming. Man, I missed, I missed getting on the, the rink. I haven't played hockey in probably two years now. 
I miss it. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, it is. Is it still fun for you? Oh yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, you know, it's always fun to get on the ice and just be there and yeah. try to get better. Obviously, in the <laughs> summer and then compete during the year. It's fun. It's it's good how right now you say it's fun and how you don't think it's a job yet. It's like yeah, you say it's professional. It's you make big money, but it's good how you still think it's fun because I I think there's guys that have been playing professional hockey and they look at it more as a job now which there's nothing wrong with that it's a job it's a career there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but i think as long as you can have that kid mindset and go to the rink and have fun with it i think that's a i think that's a very good thing and it seems like you're very excited about your future and you still have that kid mentality of the big smile and you're excited to go to the rink absolutely i think i think it's the way it should be like you choose that as a kid and you kind of, you know, after that, you're making, like I said, making big money, like you're, yeah. so it's your job. And I think for me, it's, if, if I choose that, it should be fun, right? So yeah. I should have fun, right? Like it's not, it's not, it's, it shouldn't be against me. Like it shouldn't be like, like uh, yeah. I don't want to go through the ring today or I don't want to go through the gym today. Like, I think you got to have that right mentality and right mindset. Like most of, you know, most of the big guys, like, you know, even watching the uh, Michael Jordan's, the last See, dance yeah, yeah the last dance like you see what he was doing there like he was first in and last out every time kobe bryant like you see all those guys and obviously Sidney crosby and you always see the that he's putting in no extra work and uh, on the ice he's always last off the ice he always first on the ice doing you know face-offs and he's already best guy in nhl probably for face-offs and he's still trying to get better mm. right so you see see all those big guys what they're doing and you kind of just want to have as, as much fun as they do because they're not going to go out there 30 minutes before practice and not having fun with it. Yeah. Like, there's no way you're going to do that. So I think, you know, he's, they, those guys have fun with it. And, you know, tr- obviously they take it serious, but they having fun with it at the same time. It's a great atmosphere to, to be in here in Atlantic Canada with all the pro guys. It's, a, it's one of the best places, I think, in the world to be a, a developing hockey player. Yeah. And I say that with every serious bone in my body. I think if you're a young, I think Jack Eichel was just here the other day. I heard that. Uh, he still might be here. And, you know, you look at a guy like that who's in the middle of a trade, uh, I don't want to say trade war, but he's up in the air. Maybe he's dealing with the business side of hockey, and that's not fun. No. But if you can come here and train and have fun and work hard, I think that there's uh, there's no other place in the world you want it to be? that you want to be. I really think that. Look at you. You're you're from Russia. Yeah. You you could be in Russia training you, but instead you're here. Yeah. There, there's guys that come from all over the world to train with Sid and Nate and Marshawn and all these guys because they know that they work the hardest, but at the same time they have fun because they love the game. Exactly. It's well, very cool. Two years ago, both Hughes were there and Taylor Hall was out there on yeah. the ice, right? So like, John Tavares. Yeah, you see those guys, those big names just you know coming to Halifax and skate where they could be in Toronto with the big facilities and all that kind of stuff right but yeah. you see all those big names coming here it's kind of it's, it's just fun yeah it's also a distraction free area like uh, we, we were talking earlier about how when you're up in Ottawa and you're at the hotel and then you go to the rink like there's not like a whole lot of distractions in Ottawa it's nice to be here and not have a whole lot of distraction. Yeah, you, exactly. you have beaches, you have nature, you have the ocean, you have the lake, and you got a hockey rink and a gym. You can't really get in a lot of trouble here. It's it's, it's a fun, safe environment to, to, to work, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's all you need, like yeah. fresh air. Well, you worked out, you you know, you worked out, you went on the ice, you know, you, know, you yeah. did your job, then you have all the time to relax, go enjoy the weather and, you know, sit on the beach, on the beach. You know, go in the water if it's good yeah. enough and, you know, tan and stuff like that. Just, you know, relax <laughs> relax as much as you can, right? So, yeah. So, I think that's a beautiful place. And, I, you know, I always want to be back here and uh, yeah. spend as much time as I can here. Has your family been here to Halifax? My, yeah. My parents, were, well, my mom was here for a game. Oh, nice. Because the, she was coming uh, to see me, obviously, in Cape Breton. So, we played one of the games here in Halifax and she came out with my billet parents. So, she was at the rink and stuff and kind of nice. so, explored around a little bit of Halifax. It wasn't in the summertime. It was in wintertime, obviously. Uh. But, yeah, still, it was lots of fun for her. That's good. Do they plan on going to Ottawa this year at all to see you? Well, hopefully, yeah. We will, I'm able to get them over yeah. after Christmas, I hope. So, so yeah, we will see how everything goes. But it looks like everything going positive way now, right? So, you know. Yeah, how, what's the situation like in Russia with COVID? I mean, it's it's been up and down. It's like just like here. Yeah, yeah, it's been up and down. It's it's been it was like when I got there, it was getting bad, better and better. But then as soon as I left, apparently like third wave hit it and stuff. I like got scary again. So I don't even know what to tell you. I don't know either. I don't yeah. know any answers. What's going on? Yeah. 
but no that, that it's good that you're here it's good that you're working and it's good that you're training and you have got you got a bright future right now coming up in ottawa in the nhl i think so at least yeah for sure yeah i'm just looking forward to my future and you know what what future holds i say it's it's fun to work for something right so yeah that's all i do do you have any advice right now for a young maybe russian kid or just a kid from canada that's working towards becoming a pro hockey player do you have any advice for that person I think my best advice would be, you know, I've been through a lot, been, uh, like I said before, being passed over twice at the draft, whereas, you know, it's kind of not, not everybody could take that situation as good as I did, right, not to quit on the thing. So I think for most of the guys, like, if you're, if you're working hard and you think you're working 100% and, you know, you didn't, didn't get rewarded first time, but then second time you go in and, you know, work, you know, 1%, you got better 1% each day, and you kind of didn't get rewarded again, but you shouldn't quit on it. You should keep going because at some point you're going to get rewarded. Like work hard is pays off and everybody says that. So at some point it might be late, it might be early, but you shouldn't quit on that. So that was, that's the biggest advice for me, for you know all the guys who are trying to get to pro. You shouldn't quit on something, you know, you've been doing for what, 10 years and 11 years and just, you know, yeah. say, yeah, you know, I'm done with it. Like it, it's just, it's something you shouldn't do, I think. You know, wicked. Igor, you're the man. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm going to do my best this year. We're, we're thinking of doing a little Canada trip, so if we're in the Ottawa, Ontario area, I'll shoot you a message and we'll come watch a game. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, everyone watching and listening, thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, it's Monday. Have fun. Work hard. Enjoy the rest of the summer. We're out. Peace.